band together and, and as William plays something real soft like, let's just invite the presence of the Lord in our service tonight. Amen. Ask Him to move and minister to every need that's here. Lord, we love you. And we thank you, Father, for this great opportunity we have to be in your house. Thank you for everyone that's come to be in this building tonight, Lord. We love you and we praise you and magnify your wonderful name, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would just bless our people tonight. God, we ask, Lord, that you would just move in this service. Help us to worship in spirit and truth. Touch the preaching of your word tonight, Lord. Touch every song. Anoint it, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. Just the fellowship. Lord, as we reach out to one another in love, Touch every heart that's here tonight. In Christ's name. Hallelujah. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. If we sing this first song, make your way around yeah, yeah. and shake hands with you. I don't know what to do.
for all he's done for us uh, this uh, this past week, what he's going to do for us next week, and we get to that. Amen. Do you love the Lord tonight with all your heart? Alright, we're gonna do a song now. Let's see, what's that? Jesus, hold my hand. That's an old That's an old hymn. You know what? I like the old hymn song. I like the new song, but I like the old song, but I like the hymn song. There's nothing wrong with any of it. It has got God's uh, uh, mercy and grace and tell us about what Jesus Christ has done for us. Amen. 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 Let's try that in a seat, Brother Glenn.
Some of us a little bit, man. Yeah. All three got so. Amen. You guys may use it. get started tonight, I just want to make mention of something. Um, everybody that's here tonight, if you would just call and inform maybe five people of what's going on here Saturday morning. Uh, yard sale and breakfast starting at 6 o'clock. That, that would contribute to a lot of people being there. It would help. We've got signs up and uh, we want it to be successful. And not only in the yard sale, but the breakfast also. And we're going to have some good food out there and, and have some fun and fellowship. And uh, so just just call four or five people. And if you feel real good, call ten. <laughs> so we get, we get a crowd out here just by phone call going. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14. And verse 27, and I'll read down through 31, Sherry. John 14, 27 through 31. Amen. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Mm -hmm. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you might believe. Here's my text. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Back up to verse 30. The prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. Father, we love you for your word. We ask for your anointing, your touch tonight, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would move in our hearts. We ask, Lord, that you would make this clear to us this evening. Anoint the messenger tonight to bring this message. And we give you all the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 In the book of Proverbs, that's what I'm preaching on, nothing in me. The book of Proverbs said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Jesus said that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. But an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. And then he said this, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Amen. You cannot hide what's in our hearts. Out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouth will speak. We know that by studying the scriptures that the heart is the very center and the, of our being. Jesus says that we are to love the Lord with all of our what? All of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our minds, and all of our strength. Paul said that it is with the heart that we believe unto righteousness. I love that scripture. Paul said with your heart you believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you see what's in your heart is coming out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. 
That's, that's pretty simple, isn't it? If you believe that Jesus loves you, that's going to come out of your heart. If you believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's what's coming out of your heart. So he says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. The mouth confesses what is in our heart. This part of Scripture, Jesus said, the prince of this world is coming. And he knew the devil was coming. But he has nothing in me. When you look at that phrase, what that is saying, he is saying that when the devil comes, he's looking for something. He's looking for a foothold. He's looking for something in the life of Christ that he can lay claim to. Saying, I put that in there. And I'm going to exploit what I put in his heart. And Jesus said, he's coming, but he's not going to find anything in it. Can you say amen? amen? He's coming, but He's not going to find anything in me. He's not going to find a place where He can get a foothold into my life. Amen. I know He's coming. I thought of it this way. Up to that point in His life, Satan could never get anything in Christ. What about the temptation? The Bible says in the book of Matthew, that Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness yeah, yeah. to be tempted of the devil. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Ghost led Jesus. And I like where He went. The Bible says, led Him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. That doesn't make any sense to you and I until we understand and realize this. That Jesus went there in the capacity of the second Adam to defeat the devil who the first Adam could not defeat. Hallelujah. All it took was one temptation in the garden and man was sold out to sin. But the devil tried over and over and over to get to the second Adam, but he could never get to him. Hallelujah. That's why, folks, we have to understand this truth, that where Adam sold us out, Christ bought us back. Hallelujah. Where sin reigned in Adam, in everybody under Adam, where sin reigned in him, you don't have to try to sin. Sin reigns in your heart. Amen. So what we needed was another Adam. Somebody that would come along and have no sin in him. Amen. That he could give that to you and I and transfer it to us. Amen. That we could reign in life by one Christ Jesus. You see, when we were sinners, we were we the sin was reigning in our life. Adam was the wellspring of sin. And that was passed on to every one of us. And we could not defeat it in ourselves. Even God gave them the law. He knew they couldn't keep it. Hello? The law was a tyrant. The law revealed the holiness of God. And none of us could live that holy life before God. Can you say amen? Oh, and, and Paul said it's like this. It's like having a husband <laughs> that wants to tell you everything to do, but he don't want to help you. <laughs> you read it. It's in the book of Romans. But now, he said, we are dead to that husband that we could be married to another. I am dead to the old life. That I could be new in Christ Jesus. And where I was a sinner and Adam's sin was given to me, guess what happens now? Now I receive His righteousness. I reign in life by one. Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm excited about this. 
the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all points as you and I. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. How many knows He was? Amen. There's not a temptation that you face that Jesus didn't face. Not one. He was tempted in A-L-L. All points as you and I, yet without sin. It's not a sin to be tempted. That's not the sin. The sin is letting that temptation get into your heart and bringing forth sin. Man sins when he lusts. And that lust conceives in his heart and it brings forth sin. And sin brings forth death. But let me ask you something. What if we never let it get in our heart? What if we never let it get a hold of our spirit? It's like the old saying in Pentecost years and years ago. You can't keep a bird from flying over your head or landing in your hair. But you don't let it build a nest there. That's the way it is. There's not a person in this building you haven't suffered through temptation after temptation after temptation. And you know what? You realize what's happening to you? The devil is trying to get a place in your heart. He's trying to put something in your spirit. He's trying to put something in you. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's contrary to the Word of God, that's what He wants to put in there so He can come back later. Amen. So He could go before God and say, you see that one down there that says they're saved? Amen. Guess what I've got them to do? Amen. I want to tell you something. He may do that. Amen. And it may be true. You may have done something you're not supposed to do. But can I tell you a greater truth? Amen. That He will forgive us the blood of Jesus. We'll cleanse us from all of our sins. And though we fail, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. And His Holy Spirit has found to lift us above reproach and give us victory over our sins. Oh, hallelujah. I'm never going to be lost. You know why? Because I've made up my mind I'm going to heaven. I'm going to keep believing God. I'm going to keep preaching until I can't preach anymore. I'm going to keep walking with God because I made up my mind. I don't want anything in here that's going to keep me out of hell. And all the devil comes. You know the thing about the devil, he always comes back. I've never seen anything like it in my life. You'd think that he'd give up on you. <laughs> Don't you get tired of doing that? Yeah. Here he comes back again. Over and over again. Yeah. Temptation after temptation. I'm learning something about this wilderness experience that Jesus had with the devil. When he was tempted of the devil those 40 days and 40 nights. I, I think the devil was tempting him all along the way, but when he really got hungry, when he really got to the place, 40 days without eating, never anybody would be hungry. And the devil come to him and said, I'll tell you what, why don't you just turn them stones into bread? Hello? He took him up to the pinnacle of the temple and said, cast yourself down because the Word of God says that God give His angels charge concerning you. If you dash your foot against the stone, they're there to help you. Hello? Then He took him into a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them all. I believe that's why a lot of rock stars, a lot of these men and women who have sold their souls to the devil. 27 years old. 30 years old. Somebody said the good die young. Yeah, they do when they've sold their soul to the devil. He comes and says, I won't pay right now. Amen. Don't, don't believe, folks, that the devil is not an enemy. Amen. That can kill people. Jesus says, don't fear him that can kill the body, but fear him that can kill the soul and put it in hell. 
Amen. We're to fear God. Amen. So the devil is a powerful being. Amen. And he can take people to hell and he can cause them to be lost. But guess what? For the Christian man and woman, it's like that message I was preaching a couple Sundays ago about going down to the beach and couldn't find a vacancy. I hated that that night. It was awful driving from motel to motel. You've got a vacant, no vacancy up there. Are you sure? No vacancy. So we ended up standing across the street somewhere. And that's what we got to do to the devil. We got to tell the devil, devil, I've got something in me that's greater than you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I've got something in me that's more mighty than you. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Oh, hallelujah. God is coming to take residence in us. We are to be filled with the Spirit. I'm all filled up, son. I don't have any room for you in my life. Amen. You're not going to find nothing in us. Are y'all with me tonight? Every temptation that we face, Jesus faced. And all those three temptations, He's teaching us something. Number one, He's teaching us how to deal with and master our temptations. Amen. Hello? Somebody said, oh, I'm so tempted. Oh, we do get tempted. Can you say amen? amen. There's not a one of us that don't go through that temptation. But Jesus is telling us how to master that temptation. How do you do it, Glenn? The same way Jesus did it. It is written. Hello? Yeah. Let the Word of God rule and reign in your heart. Yeah. When the three Hebrew children faced that fiery furnace, you know what was guiding their life? What was guiding and governing those three boys? You know what it was? Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and you're not going to bow down to any image. They said, we don't care. We're not going to bow before that image. We're not going to get on our knees before it. Amen. If it means going into that furnace, we'll go into the furnace. Amen. When they went in there, God said to His Son, go get in there with them. When we stand with Him, He stands with us. When we stand on the Word of God and we say, I'm not going to do that. If we stand with the Word of God, God has promised you and I that He will stand with us. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody said, is it that simple? Yes, it's that simple. Stand on the Word of God. Amen. God told me I'm not supposed to do that in His Word. We stand on that. He will enforce it. He will enforce it. If we stand on the Word of God. Hallelujah. Then I think the second reason in that temptation is what I mentioned earlier about being in the capacity of the second Adam as a federal head of a new creation. He's teaching us that if he goes through the temptations, you're going to have to go through the yeah. temptations. Amen. I'm going to have to go through the temptations. Yeah. Hallelujah. Three areas of temptation that every one of us face is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And most of our battles will be fought on that ground. Yeah. The lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. And Jesus defeated the devil and never one of them. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is at nearly at the end of his life. 33 and a half years old in his life. And he was able to say, the devil's coming. He's coming. And he has nothing in me. Yeah. yeah, I've got a few more minutes. I just want to cover a couple things that I thought of. 
when they come to him and the prince of this world come to him and try to discourage him from the cross. How many knows that discouragement is an evil disease? Oh, God help us preachers. God help us preachers. It's so easy to get discouraged. We, yeah, God's people don't realize and understand how much they can encourage the preacher. Amen. Hello? They don't realize how much they can encourage their preacher just by being a regular attender to the church. Being faithful to the house of God. Giving. All of those things are encouragement to the preacher. But Jesus was never discouraged. Things that would discourage you and I had no place in Him. Things that would make us take a step back had no place in Him. The Bible says He set His face like a plant toward Jerusalem. He knew exactly where He was going. How many knows that? He was going. He knew that it's not going to be long that He has to hang up on that tree. They're going to drive spikes into His hand and into His feet. They're going to lacerate His back. They're going to spit on Him. They're going to pull His beard. Amen. They're going to do all of those things to Him. And not one time did He get discouraged. But He set His face like a flint toward Jerusalem and said, This is my Father's will, and I delight to do Thy will, O God. Oh, hallelujah. He was not discouraged, the book of Isaiah said. He was not discouraged. But I'm learning, amen, that if God or the devil can get me discouraged, He can... He can wreak havoc in my life. We have to come to the place in our life where we realize that we're not going to let Him discourage us. It doesn't matter what goes on. We're going to say, I'm going to encourage myself in God. If I have to walk up and down this little track right here with my hands praising God, give in to it so many times discouragement. Yes. Oh, I'm so discouraged about it. Oh, you're not saying something that's not happening to everybody else. <laughs> All of us get discouraged at times. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Discouragement. It's amazing what discouragement can do to us if we let it in. You don't have to let it in. When it comes knocking on your door, it comes pretty often Say, I'm filled up. There you go. I don't have any place for you in my life. Oh, I'm telling you. Y'all remember that story in the Bible where they landed on a certain shore, all those barbarians around there. And the Bible says Paul was picking up some sticks and out launched a viper on him. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember that story? Yeah. That viper bit into his arm or his hand or whatever it was. Hadn't read it in a long time. But that viper bit into him and it was a poisonous snake. Those barbarians said, sure, yeah. he's, he, he, he is a, yeah. a, a devil. He's got a devil. Yeah. Amen. They thought he had a devil. And that thing latched onto him and said, and, and, and he's going to die. But the Bible says he just shook it off into the fire. And to say amen. Oh, that's the way you do it, folks. When the devil comes with his poisonous bite and he tries to defeat you, just shake him off and say, I know you're going to the fire, son. Oh, hallelujah. If you love it, just shake it off. That's how you do it. Just shake it off. Make him mad. And you'll be glad. <laughs> and won't be sad. <laughs> Discouragement. What about bitterness? I've seen people get so bitter. I knew a man one time had a great testimony <coughs> in the church. Some people had done something to him. Hurt him bad. It hurt him. Here a man had been saved for probably 40 years. I remember I loved to talk to him about the Word. I loved to, because 
I felt like he had a lot of wisdom. I talked to him about the Word of God. When those people did that to him, something changed. I've never seen a change like that come over anybody. He just changed. Every time he'd come to church, he'd stand up and he'd tell everybody what they did to me. Over and over and over again. And I remember sitting in a parking lot one day with him. And I said, brother, you've got to quit. You've got to get past this. It's a root of bitterness that's got into your heart. And it's defiling you. You've let it in. And the devil's not going to go away. He's going to use that time and time and time again. And you're going to be spilling your poison all over the house of God. What you need to do is to take it to Christ. Bury it at the altar. And say it's finished. It's over with. And I'm not going to make mention of it no more. That's right. Amen. The root of bitterness got into his heart. Satan come time and time again to exploit it. The bitterness that was there. Jesus said, the prince of this world comes. He has nothing in me. No discouragement. No root of bitterness. Here was a man that was rejected by his own people. Here was a man that was spit upon. Here was a man that was the palm of their hand they took and smote him on the face. They lacerated his back. They put nails in his hands and in his feet. He was reviled by those hanging beside him. But do you know what Jesus said on the cross? Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. Even in that darkest hour, the devil's down at the foot of the cross said I couldn't get to him. I tried. I did my best couldn't find nothing in him. Let me say one more thing and I'll close. There's not a person in this building I wouldn't think that hasn't gone through severe defeat in your Christian experience. Every one of us have gone through defeat and guess what happens? The devil comes by and tries to finish us off. <coughs> and if we don't know what to do at that time Amen. and we don't understand what we're supposed to do Amen. hello mm-hmm. I mean take for instance in the book of Corinthians where there was a brother living with his own mother in law and you would think that this man has no chance whatsoever mm-hmm. but the apostle Paul said I beg to differ come on He's got a soul. Hello? He tells them that you are supposed to deal with this man. For the destruction of the flesh, I've delivered him that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where we are prone to wipe people out and wipe them off and say, God can't use them. And every one of us has faced failure in our life. But we have to understand this. The way to do it is to get back up. Repent. Say, God, give me grace. And I'll keep walking with you. Give me grace and I won't turn back. I'll keep moving with you, Lord. If you just give me the touch that I need, I'll keep walking with you. Doesn't matter what everybody says. What matters is your relationship with God. Hello? 
That's what makes the difference. Am I in relationship with God? Or have I let my father drive me from him? Have I let my failure move me away from the house of God? Or have I come to the right place in my life saying, God, I need you? Amen. Yes. The Bible says all that come to him, Bonnie, he wouldn't cast out. That's right. Hello? Mm -hmm. Every one of us. Nothing in us. <clears throat> Jesus says, woe unto the world because of offenses. Because offenses are going to come. Hello? Yeah. Right. And I can tell you, folks, the worst prison in the world is not bars and concrete. The worst prison in the world is unforgiveness. That's right. That's true. Yeah. When you've got unforgiveness in your life, you have severed your relationship with God until you get that mess straightened up. Right. If you do not forgive your brother his sin, Jesus hello, if it's transgressed against you, right. what did the Bible say? Neither will I forgive you. Right. Hello? Right. And how many people have <coughs> wrestled with unforgiveness in the world? Sure, he has to forgive me nearly every day. <laughs> she's learned, she's learned, she's learned. That Glenn ain't going to change. <laughs> I love you, baby. Stand with me. How many want to say, Lord, there's nothing in me? Yes. I've got a clean bill of health today. There's nothing in my heart that I have to make right. If I, if I do have to make it right, I'm going to come up to this altar. And I'm going to make it right with God. Anybody feel that way in your heart tonight? Anybody feel like you would like to get something straightened out with the Lord? I'm so thankful that we're all there. We're doing good, ain't we? I want to open our altar tonight. And I want us to come and seek the Lord as many as will. Come and look to the Lord today. And say, Lord, I don't want anything in me. I don't want anything in me, Lord. Yeah. 